Let's now go and look at programming and periodization fundamentals. We're going to delve into this in more detail in the second part of this lecture, but I think it's important to understand um, from a programming and periodization perspective how we like to program for our athletes on a week-to-week -week basis. When it comes to max strength, the rep range that we normally use is one to three repetitions. When we look at the percentage method, we like the athlete to be training between 80 to 100% of their one repetition max. When we're trying to develop a strength speed quality, the rep range that, that is normally best developed is from two to five repetitions. The percentage, again, that we need to train in is 60 to 80% of our one repetition max. When it comes to developing speed strength, again, we need to develop that in the rep range of two to six. The reason why the reps are getting slightly higher is because, again, there's been a lot of literature, a lot of publications done around the best velocities being recorded at second and third repetition. The percentage range for this, again, is 40 to 60% of our one repetition max. Looking at developing reactive strength, this is normally best done from two to eight repetitions. The percentage range would be 20 to 40% of your one repetition max. Max velocity. The rep range to develop max velocity can be anywhere from one to 100 meters, depending on the outcome uh, of the speed session. Again, the percentage range can vary from minus 20% to plus 20% of body weight. We never jeopardize strength or speed training with high repetition. Let's now go and look at research done by PUSH. Um, and what they found was changes over 10 repetitions of a back squat found that a gradual decrease in bar velocity was apparent. It also indicated that the individual responses were slightly different. As we can see here from the graph, the standard deviation changes after five or six repetitions and starts to massively decrease on repetition seven, eight, nine, ten. Therefore, this would indicate that when we are training for and looking at velocity based training, this is best achieved up to six repetitions. Anything beyond that, we start to get a velocity drop off. Therefore, it's not ideal to train speed strength or power type qualities with anything beyond six repetitions. When it comes to training, velocity based training in the gym, we like to monitor our athletes. A good way to monitor your athletes is with an accelerometer. There's many, many tools out there. There's linear transducers, um, fitter dimes. What we use is a push band. A push band is an accelerometer and it tracks how fast in meters per second the athlete is traveling. We know again from looking at a lot of literature, maximum power output is recorded in and around 0 0.7 to 0.9 meters per second. When we wear a push band, we normally get our athletes to wear the push band on a Thursday, Friday when they're doing ballistic um, type velocity based training and what this allows us to do is track their bar speed. The push band is also very good for establishing 1RMs. Say if we have a, a golfer who might not be able to do a 1RM but we need to prescribe a percentage method to him. By doing a 3 or a 5 repetition max with the push band it will give us an established 1 repetition max therefore allowing us program for our athletes. A push band is also very good at monitoring athlete, athletes from a jump perspective. We can look at a counter movement jump, a squat jump, a loaded squat jump for a readiness to train. We can also look at um, depth jumps for our reactive strength index. When it comes to maximum strength, every athlete should be able to work out their 1RM. We can do this using a push band. Stick with the same training tool for up to three to four weeks. Apply a download week 
And when we talk about applying a download, we, we don't mean give the athletes a whole week off, we just mean change the stimulus slightly from strength type training to maybe a higher repetition or her, 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 hypertrophy uh, type quality. On week four then, or week five, go and change that training modality. This is what a typical maximum strength program would look like for the athletes when we program. Week one, we have 80 plus percent, so we know that's max strength. The exercise in question is a squat. The sets, we look at five. The reps, again, we're looking at five repetitions. And the training tool that we've used here is chain, because we know chain goes nicely with max strength type training. Week two, we've gone to 85%, so we've gone up, the percentage has gone up. The exercise in question again, we've stayed with the same exercise, which is a squat, five sets again, and the reps have come down one to four repetitions. The training tool again is, ch is chain. So on week two, we can see that the, the percentage method has increased by 5%, but the repetition has come down by one. Week three, 90 plus percent. So we're really heading for top end max strength. The exercise again, staying with the squat, five sets, we're down to three repetitions. Again, the training tool being chain. Week four, we can see now we're at 95%. So this is really top end max strength. We're still using the squat, five sets, we're down to two repetitions, and the training tool, again, is chain. Week five, we apply that download where we change the training stimulus, and in week six, we bring them back into another strength phase. Let's go on now and look at, your, look at our power type training or our speed strength uh, type training. Every athlete, again, should be able to work out 40 to 60% of their one repetition max using the push band. We know that when we're developing speed strength, that needs to be done between 40 to 60% of our one repetition max. Keep the velocities between 0.7 to 0.9 meters per second in order to best develop that speed strength quality. Apply a pyramid type effect to the block of training, like we looked at in the strength training, where the percentages went from 80 up to 95. Again, we need to apply a pyramid when it comes to our speed strength training as well. Sticking to the same training tool for three to four weeks, applying a download, which is training, changing the training stimulus, and then we go and change training modality on that sixth week. Let's now go and look at how we develop speed strength with our programming. Week one, 50% of our one repetition max. The sets are five, the repetitions are six, the training tool is a black band. Week two, 55% of our one repetition max. The sets are five again, the repetition has come down one, and again, we're staying with our, a black band. On week three, we're at 60%, sets are the same, repetitions are down to four, and again, a black band. Now week four, we've gone to 65%. In the previous slides, we talked about speed strength being best developed between 40 to 60%. But in week four here, I've gone to 65%. Sets have been five sets, same again. The repetitions are down to three, and again, we've stayed with the black band. The reason we've gone to 65% is because we are now tracking barbell speeds, barbell velocities in meters per second, and we know that the athlete in question is still training between 0.7 and 0.9 meters per second. Therefore, he is still eliciting the strength quality that is speed strength. So it's vitally important to monitor our athletes in the gym. Whatever means or method you may have to monitoring, monitoring your athletes, it's important that we do that from a pro programming perspective so that we know we are heading in the right direction and we know if our athletes are adapting to our style of programming. Week five, we'll go and apply a download week where we change the training stimulus. Let's now look at periodization. Periodization can sometimes tend to be tricky if we don't have a full grasp of what periodization is for our athletes or we've never used periodization 
for our athletes, whether that be short-term development or long-term development. All periodization is, is a manipulation of volume and load. It comes in many, many different forms and four of the bigger uh, periodization models that are available to us today are linear, block, undulating and concurrent. We'll discuss in great detail those four models in the second part of this lecture this afternoon. Let's take a look at a weekly planner of how we would lay out a week to week for our athletes that we deal with. On a Sunday they would have normally have a day off so they would have a recovery day, we would let them swim or we let them visit the physio for some massage, recovery, whatever they deemed to be most effective for them on their day off, we're happy for them to do that. First day of training again, back on a Monday, uh, with a maximum strength exercise for the lower body. So we would use squats with some chain weights. We would use three repetitions because it's a maximum strength. We would give them five sets and the weight that the athlete in question is achieving is 200 kilos. He's also applying 40 kilos of chain weight to the bar. So we know that that is in and around the 20% uh, method he's applied to his maximum strength accommodating resistance. On a Tuesday, the athlete would do upper body strength with a bench press. Three repetitions, five sets. 150 kilos is what the athlete in question was moving on the day with 30 kilos of chain tension. So we know we're dealing with a, with a very strong athlete. The Wednesday, we must give the athlete a day off, let him recover, let him swim or see the physio for some massage, whatever he deems to be best for him to help him recover on that day off. On the Thursday, we bring the athlete back in we make them do some speed squat, Olympic style high bar speed squats. The rep range is five, the sets are five. The weight is 100 kilos because it's 50% of what the athlete shifted or moved on a Monday in his squat session. That is the percentage to best develop speed strength. He would use a black band when he's squatting. On the Friday, we would bring him in. He would have upper body speed strength where he would have five repetitions five sets on the bench press and he would uh, the weight that was used was 75 kilos and the band that was used was a red band. From this style of programming on the Monday it's a high neural day because it's lower extremity on the Tuesday it's a medium neural day because it's upper extremity on the Wednesday it's a day off we let the nervous system reset on the Thursday it's a high neural day because it's lower extremity on the Friday, it's a medium neural day because it's upper extremity. And on a Saturday, it's game day. The reason we put velocity-based training at the end of the week is to help that nervous system reset and recoup itself. So it's firing on all cylinders. So we're priming the athlete for competition on a Saturday. This type of programming works best for your field base athletes. It also works very nicely for your track athletes on a week-to-week -week structure. It stops any type of overload um, setting in by constantly looking after that nervous system with the velocity based training at the back end of the week. Also improving the rate of force development that was, a, that was established at the start of the week with the max strength type training. 